So that last video, I sculpted this thing out and then manually retopoed it. it. Took about an hour, about 30 minutes for the sculpt, 30 minutes for the retopo, and it ate up quite a bit of time, right? Like an hour's worth of time. So is there a faster way of doing it? Someone asked in the comments. Could you use something like quad remeasure? And the short answer here is, yeah, you could try it out, see if it works. And so that's what we'll do. We'll just go to quad remeasure, select the voxel sculpt, turn on symmetry for X. We'll use the default settings, see what happens. All right, and let it go. All right. This is the result we get out of it. And looking at the two with just the wireframes, they look very comparable. Now, the trick here, though, is that, of course, I did a little extra work on this one. So the bevels on the edges here are nice and sharp, whereas this one's going to be more of a soft form. And if we were to subdivide it, still looks very nice. Could you do this? Use this as a high poly to bake from? Sure, no problems. But if you're going to try to introduce like those hard edges into it now, you're going to have a little bit of a problem with that potentially if it wasn't a really defined shape it kind of loses those things sometimes but that doesn't mean you can't still try this and then maybe bump up the resolution a little bit as well so like we go back to the voxels and you can see it was actually in some ways more accurate to the original sculpt you know i modified it a little bit while retopping it it's one of the benefits you get of doing things manually like if you want to make a change you can make a change and so but if we want to crank that quad count up a little bit and just see what happens with a higher quad count. You can see it, it starts to actually look kind of worse in some ways because of the way the, the voxels were laid out. So there's like a balance to it. Sometimes it's hit or miss. This shape is overall, it's pretty broad, generic kind of forms. It's not really, um, you know, it's not going to miss this stuff too badly. But what if you wanted to go lower with it? What if you want to generate like a low poly quad? mesh maybe so we try like 300 select it remesh it and see what we get here and so this is the result we get with that one right so yeah some questionable things here there perhaps you know you can fix it up you can just make some manual edits or changes to it but overall not a bad result could that be a a game mesh it's going to be a little bit more optimized than this, but we could definitely go through and maybe work some things out here and make it even lower poly if we needed. So what about this one? If I was to take this one and just try to turn it into a lower, lower uh, poly state, let's see what happens. It's going to do it with the subdivision on it too. So like you can see, we get a different result out of that one too. You kind of got to pick and choose like which one you want to work with there. Maybe it's really up to you at this point. So yeah, you can do this. You can generate lower poly mesh. You can generate higher poly mesh. Does it always go the way you want it to? Not always. It's often going to fail or it's going to give you a subpar result that you got to go through and manually correct anyways. Um, but in this case here, you know, let's just run with this one. We'll just add a, a seam right here. We'll do a seam down the middle except for at the top here. We'll UV unwrap it real quick. Let's just Alt S that down a bit. There's better ways of unwrapping that possibly, but we're just going for speed here. So we'll say this is the, um, the hip uh, low. And we'll say this is the hip high. We'll line them real quick. They should have the same origin point. So we can press Alt A with machine tools, line it together. Let's grab both of those, export an FBX, go to the desktop, we'll just call it hip, and selected objects only. Okay. So we'll do that. Let's fire up Marmoset, see what happens when we bake this. Do bake project. Do the quick loader, load it up, load in hip. You see it sets it up with a high and a low for it because of the way we named it. And we'll adjust the cage. Yeah, it looks fun. Can't really tell yet. Let's do preview. Click yes, do desktop, save, boom. 
All right. It's just like that, guys. I mean, you can make mesh relatively fast. And if quadri mesher helps you in that process, you know, use quadri mesher. Is it always going to work? No, but it works quite often. Uh, it works out quite well, usually. So, just the low here to be a little tighter, maybe. Oh, too much. Let's get a little bit tighter, perhaps. Let's turn on some settings here. Let's do like ambient occlusion. Turn up the samples. Just max that. It's a 2K. We'll leave it at 2K for now. Preview it again. So now it's got AO on it. You should anyways. Click bake if you need to. And yep, there you go. So I believe it's this one. Maybe it's not that one. This one. Yeah, so we just give it a metallic so we can kind of see what any if there's any discrepancies in the normal map. It would be easier to see. You can't always expect perfect results always. It's just not how it usually goes with baking. But you can see there are some interesting little issues here still. Let's see if that's just the offset. Maybe that'll fix it. Yeah, there we go. So we're about back where we were originally anyways. Armaset tends to do pretty well with the um, original cage, the original offset. You can see now. Yep, there we go. So we have successfully turned this into a uh, low poly mesh, a lower poly mesh, should I say. And it looks pretty good. So, yep, if you can find any way to save time, like someone was mentioning Polyquill or other add ons like that to do retopo, re manual retopo, you know, certainly you can. If you find those add ons useful, I don't personally think there's too much speed increase on doing like hard surface stuff. But if you're doing more organic stuff and you had just like lots of stuff to retopo, there, that little minor bit of speed increase you would get with it would probably be useful, like being able to do strips and things like that. Um, definitely could work out very well for you possibly. So I, if you want to use it, I right, just try it out. You know, uh, polyquilt's interesting. I've been playing with it a little bit. Um, retopo flow also interesting, but I think it, it's more process to set it up than just kind of going for it with the, um, standard editing tools. So ultimately it's a judgment call on your behalf on how you want to work. I, there's obviously a reason I bought quadri measures to do things kind of like this. Whether I'm working on, uh, usually when I'm working on like natural things, uh, they tend to be more soft forms like this where you use smooth shading as the, opposed to using sharper edges and things. I, I find that quadri mesh works pretty well on those, but um, especially for like static mesh in video games and stuff. But yeah, so, you know, try it out, you know, see if it works for you. I mean, quadri mesh is still relatively cheap for personal use, right? commercial use it's a little bit more but it's still definitely a cool add-on to get and um, put to work right and start experimenting with it just remember i shown in some previous videos on how you can set up like face sets and then convert them into materials and then split them out to panels you don't have to split them to panels you can just use face sets to control or materials to control the um, topology itself to some degree like create little island clusters of topo and uh, so that way you your end result here because what ends up happening is that you know you can't always predict what is going to happen with your edge flows here right like in this case it did pretty well but yeah sometimes it does stuff like this right where it's just not so maybe so reasonable and so what do you do with that right you'd have to either well if you want like perfect mesh you might have to go and fix that but you know sometimes even on a regular subdivision mesh that you've manually done you'll run into situations like that. You see, like they might be very similar looking stuff like that going on, right? It's not the end of the world, but yeah, it's more ideal to have nice, predictable, even topology that has predictable flows to it. you see this one's not so great. So doesn't mean we can't fix it. Keep that in mind as you're doing the retopo manually, it'll be easier to fix it. As you're creating it, then going back and fixing it, right? So, but yeah, quadri mesher does it. I do it. 
generally speaking like a lot of guys want to chase perfection on their subdivision models that's you know that's, that's okay to do if you want to like it's, if you have specific reasons for it but if you're just creating high poly mesh to bake um you know don't get too too caught up in the idea of creating like the perfect subdivision mesh perhaps just get it done it's better to get it done faster and not a uh, you know spend all day trying to you know tweak the certain densities in certain areas just to be like perfect perfect you know because this one we could probably even you know bring down if we wanted to but is there a point to that i don't know i don't i don't think there would be much of a point for myself but it's possible you know to keep editing this and making it nicer and nicer you know maybe you want something more like that maybe this edge digs in down here a little bit too much somehow so maybe we don't do the um the bevel here maybe you want it softer like this merge these three verts you see you get a little bit of a softer edge there perhaps you can use things like set flow even kind of tweak the uh, positioning of things right so eventually you could work that whole edge back down if needed and those are the kind of things you get at like learning to do subdivision, learning to retopo manually and learning to control the mesh manually is one of the best things because when you use something like quadra mesh, you don't know how to fix it. Like it's going to give you more problems, right? Like sometimes they're easy fixes. You just don't know it because you, you didn't learn it. So that's, that's what ended up happening with that. So, you know, practice on little projects like this, you know, sculpt something out real quick, retopo it manually, just practice it get used to the idea of creating this and then find the shortcuts later. Like that's a better way of doing it in my opinion. Anyway. So yeah, I wanted to just talk about this because of the comment that was left. And anyways, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed. Have a nice day. I'll check you out later.